Very few things in life, if any, are more terrifying than war. Before a war, a special Kohen, a priest, the Kohen Meshuach Melchama, the Kohen anointed for battle, would deliver an inspiring speech to the Jewish soldiers, telling them not to be afraid. Then an announcement was made to tell any soldier that he should go home if he had recently built a house but not yet lived in it, planted a vineyard and not yet enjoyed it, or became engaged to a woman but not yet married her. The concern was that those soldiers would be focused on their house, their vineyard, or their wife-to-be, rather than on their battlefield responsibilities. Then, any soldier who was afraid was also excused. The sages explained that we really only needed to excuse the soldiers who were afraid, but God added the other categories because he didn't want to embarrass the ones who were leaving due to fear. It was critical to dismiss everyone who was scared so that they would not bring down the morale of their fellow soldiers. Indeed, every soldier knows the famous line written by the warrior and poet, King David, in Tehillim, Psalm 23. Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you, God, are with me. I had learned those laws and studied that sentence in Tehillim many times. But it was only recently that I appreciated their relevance to our current world. I heard a lecture several months ago from a former soldier in the Israeli army. He and his platoon were in a huge firefight with a large group of Hezbollah terrorists in Lebanon. One of the terrorists threw a grenade. The commanding officer of the platoon saw it, realized that it would kill many of his men, and so he made a split-second decision to save their lives at the expense of his own. He jumped on top of the grenade. He was killed, but his fellow soldiers were saved. The fellow who I heard give the lecture realized that he had to now assume command. He was in a different area, a fortified building, and was in less danger than his commander and the surrounding soldiers were in. But he realized that he had to take other soldiers to give them backup, to try to rescue them and to try to turn the tide of the battle. He came up with a plan, told his fellow soldiers how to attack, and they left the building. Immediately they came under fire and he dove for cover. He realized that on the one hand, he had to move forward to bring reinforcements to his soldiers that were in danger. But on the other hand, he realized that if he took another step, it might be his last on earth. He started to think about his wife and his small children, and he found himself frozen in place, immobilized, unable to move forward. But then he remembered that his rabbi in yeshiva had taught the students the laws of war and had taught them that a Jewish soldier is not allowed to think about his wife and children and family while he's in battle because if he does so he won't be able to continue. So through sheer force of will he put his wife and his children out of his mind and he was able to get up and move on. He and his fellow soldiers reached their comrades. He provided reinforcement and over the course of a many hour long firefight, they eventually won the battle. I thought that story was incredibly inspiring at so many levels. One man's determination, his commitment to Jewish law, and just as importantly, a reminder that the Torah is not a musty old book containing antiquated laws that no longer speak to us. Instead, it's a living document that continues to guide us and govern our lives in every circumstance, in every generation.